Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna keep it real. And keeping it real, I need to ask a question to you. If silver is a safe haven asset, as we've long been told it is, then why does silver always drop on negative economic news? Let's discuss that and why I consider a balanced approach to stacking both gold and silver the better idea when it comes to long-term prosperity when we return. Hey everybody and welcome back to my members, subscribers, as well as my first time viewers of my channel. I'm the Florida Stacker and I like to buy and hold gold and silver in its physical form and I do so for economic protection, for financial diversification, and also for the pure beauty and enjoyment that is stacking. That is stacking precious metals which has brought many benefits to my life. Now in this video we are going to break down silver's status as a safe haven asset and with that Let's get to it. So silver prices dropped sharply on Monday after an equally vigorous decline last Friday. This drop, according to the many financial analysts that covered global economic markets, was due to yet more renewed fear of another COVID-19 outbreak. Now, before you get all trigger happy with the keyboard, I'd like to remind you I'm just a normal guy, just like you, trying to make a living and doing the best I can. I have a nine to five and I like to stack. So please save your anti-COVID, anti-Federal Reserve, anti-government warrior rage for the politicians in Wall Street. I simply read the news and bring it to you. I don't invent it. So with fresh fear in the market, I think it's important to look at our stack and ensure that we are best positioned for times of economic instability, as well as times of strong economic activity. That right there is why I stack both gold and silver, and I also throw in a dash of platinum to keep the platinum beast off my case. So with the recent bad news regarding COVID and inflation, why did silver drop so hard as a safe haven asset? Let's break that down. So silver, as you know, is a wonderful but also versatile metal. Many of us are hyper-focused here on this channel on silver's use as money or as a store of wealth in bullion form, such as what you see before you in these coins and bars. Now, silver has long been regarded as a store of value, so that's what brings today's activity, or the recent activity that is, into question. Silver has many uses for mankind in terms of industry, and that is the key word. You cannot discount silver's attachment to industry. More so than it does as bullion, silver is tied to industry. It's actually strongest of all when it comes to the value of silver. As a matter of fact, only a quarter of silver mined is destined for coins or bars or collectibles, and that leaves approximately 75% of silver for industry. Now, according to geology.com, nearly 35% of silver is destined for electronics, and solar power applications do make up a large portion of that 35%, while 10% supports photography and jewelry and silverware accounts for 6% of silver's demand. A wide swath of industrial applications ranging from antibacterial mattress toppers to a whole host of different medical applications does account for that remaining 24%. So my friends, to put it bluntly, silver is indeed a store of wealth, and that's why I stack it. However, silver's strong ties to industry are why we see more volatility when economic indicators do begin to point down. Silver industrial ties are why you often hear silver referred to as the opportunity metal. And with that opportunity, of course, we do incur more risk in stacking silver than we do with stacking gold. When the market sees a slowing economy, which leads to less production, potentially fewer jobs, or a global supply chain disruption, the market begins to sell off and paper silver contracts are no exception to that rule. With silver having stronger ties to industry than gold does, the precious metal simply falls harder and faster when economic activity is assumed to decline. Gold's fewer industrial applications, as well as its much more firmly planted role as a store of wealth, does give the yellow metal more resistance to economic degradation. Once more, a great reason to stack both metals to cover your bases, so to speak. Silver as the undervalued opportunity metal with a whole lot of upside potential, and of course, gold to hold and store as savings, a tangible, true to its name, safe haven asset. So remember that silver stackers, a stronger economy is typically better for silver. And this also brings me back to my stacking castle analogy. 
So for those of you that missed my castle analogy in a video I published a couple of months back, I'll go ahead and break down that analogy again for you today, which should also sum up my entire financial philosophy. I'll start by reminding you, the viewer, that you are the king or the queen of your own financial kingdom. It is truly up to you to choose how to spend, what to save, and how to invest your currency. As king of my realm, I knew I needed a strong castle to protect what wealth I had already earned. And like any strong building or skyscraper, I started with its foundation, a strong foundation for which I can find security and also plan my future kingdom expansions. I needed something tried and true, something stable, and with a track record of lasting through the ages like the many European castles of yore that still stand today. Gold, to me, is the castle keep, the interior of the castle, right there in the middle, the last line of defense, or my own personal Alamo. Gold gives me peace of mind, and the more gold that I have, the more financially secure I feel. Now, to protect my castle keep and gold... I knew I needed a strong castle wall, and that's where silver comes in. Now, castle walls can work for or against you. Walls, as they are, are very good at keeping things out, but not so great in allowing things in. This is the give and take of silver, the higher risk, higher opportunity metal of the two. Now, I don't want to lose my castle walls to invaders, or to put it bluntly, to bills, and life's other and often unexpected expenses. As you know, we pay a pretty high premium to buy and hold physical silver today, and I don't feel like losing that premium or the weight of my stack if I fall on hard times. So in order to protect my castle walls or my silver, I also had to build a moat. That moat, of course, is cash or fiat currency, which can absorb the unexpected expenses of life, so you don't need to sell your stack. So while cash is trash in many people's eyes, and it is indeed inevitably doomed to fail, we need it to protect our stack from the unexpected and to keep our castle safe. Lastly, I look at my stocks, my cryptocurrency, as well as my business pursuits as my army. Out, away from the castle, winning and sometimes losing battles to hopefully expand my influence to expand my kingdom and bring more prosperity to my family. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that and also learned from it. Becoming wealthy, my friends, is a side effect of hard work, of sound choices, and of course, some luck. It isn't truly the pursuit to be wealthy, but the result of your pursuits that will get you there. Remember, friends, that gold and silver are money, but also have other purposes, purposes for which have larger and smaller influences on their value. It is for that reason that I decided to stack both medals. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I look forward to having you back tomorrow with our Saving in Silver series, as well as our other precious metals-focused topics, which are sure to come. So remember, silver is indeed an investment, a safe haven, so to speak, but not quite so safe as gold, as the opportunity metal, of course, incurs more risk. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care, my friends. Keep stacking and have a great day.